Uh, Bruno, we'll jump into the third, uh, well, the second question for today, which basically deals uh, with commission and property practitioners. Um, so, yeah, uh, so this uh, uh, viewer wants us to do a deep dive when the com um, into when the commission due to a property practitioner is payable, uh, when it becomes payable, right? And specifically what the procedure for payment of commission prior to registration and what the risks are that the PPRA uh, refers to when dealing with payment prior registration on consent of the purchaser. And then as a second leg there, Bruno, as you close off, um, is, it, is it permissible for the standard OTP of the property practitioner to contain a clause stating that uh, the commission will be payable prior to registration upon the fulfillment of the suspensive conditions. Sure. Um, all right. So this goes off the back of the previous conversations that we've been having around mandates. Um, so obviously the natural flow is that now we start looking at individual mandates and start giving them some attention. So the question around commission makes a lot of sense and is very relevant to this. Now, uh, if if uh, anyone's watched the previous episodes, we spoke about the different types of mandates, one of them obviously being a, a sale mandate. Now, the sale mandates, as, as expressed before, there were things like open mandates, exclusive mandates, sole mandates. Uh, there were a number of different types of mandates, dual listing mandates. Um, but ultimately, here we're having the conversation and making the assumption that uh, if the person has fulfilled their function in terms of this mandate and actually made the introduction of the seller and the purchaser, because we're starting to speak about when commission becomes due, right? So let's take it a step back and just think about the legal consequences. So if a person signed a mandate, a seller specifically, and entitled you as a property practitioner to sell this property, now your function is contained in, in that mandate, your role, your responsibilities. Now, typically the industry norm is that the function is find a willing and able buyer, bring that buyer to the table, allow that buyer to make an offer. And once the deal is concluded, it's your job is considered to have been done, right? That That's the normal, that's the norm behind it. So irrespective of what type of mandate it is, whether it's sole, exclusive, open, if you fulfill this function of finding an able and willing buyer, allowing them to make an offer and obviously getting the contract to a point where it's perfected, mm -hmm. there's no suspensive conditions um, and everything's going ahead, you've actually done your job in terms of that mandate. The only complexities come in, for example, dual mandates where there might be two agents uh, that need to be paid. Now, what you're also going to find in that mandate uh, more often than not is, um, uh, you know, basically terms or, or clauses there that state when the amount is due versus when it's payable. Now, these are two very different concepts. An amount can become due right now, but it doesn't mean it's going to be paid to you right now. It's only going to be paid to you at a certain point, be it in a month, two months, three months, or upon registration. Now, the practice for this is, I mean, it's, it's because of cash flow. So the agent's commission gets paid on transfer because that is when the seller actually receives the funds and is able to pay the commission to the property practitioner. It's just a cash flow question. So I work with many mandates, especially in the investment space, where the commission becomes due way before registration, as long as the contract is binding and there are no suspensive conditions and these have been fulfilled, Technically speaking, the agent has earned the commission and that commission is due, but it's not yet payable. And that is the difference between the different types of mandates. So an auctioneer, for example, you'll find that when the purchaser attends the auction, buys the property, pays that commission, that commission, upon, as soon as the seller accepts that sale, that commission is earned by the uh, by the auctioneer who can actually appropriate it because the contract's done. But with sales like this, for example, commission is earned, but it, the cash flow dictates that it's only paid to the property practitioner after registration. And that and that unfortunately it can be changed, but most uh, the reason why it's practice is you'll find that the sellers 
aren't going to, uh, to be willing to pay something until they've actually received the proceeds of the sale. Um, to the extent that if you did actually have to go litigate, um, even if there was no registration, you can litigate for your commission, provided that the suspensive conditions were fulfilled. If the parties after that decide to cancel the contract for some reason or another, it's not your problem. You can actually still go sue for commission. And that's just it, that evidences uh, when the commission is actually due and the fact that it's due prior to, uh, prior to registration. Right. So, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Bruno, for answering that question. So, obviously, that goes uh, uh, directly into the, the series that we're dealing with in terms of uh, mandates and commissions. So, we'll be continuing. We have that conversation throughout our, our, our lengthy period. Uh, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That does bring us to the end of today's episode, and we'll be seeing you guys again next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Cool.